How's it going everyone? Today what we're going to be doing is comparing my two least favorite hydroponic growing mediums. One of which is micro mats, which is a kind of pressed wood uh, fiber mat, and the other one is burlap. Both of these are my least favorite because these are the ones that I have the least success with. So I thought it'd be fun to do a video growing with both of them and let's just kind of see what happens here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be seeding probably, let's say 15 grams of this Easter, Eastern Sun Asian microgreen mix from uh, Rainbow Heirloom. This is actually something we got off of Amazon. Now we saw that, so we figured we'd give their seeds a shot here. So let me go ahead and get some seed weight out and before I actually do that, what we need to do is slightly mist our growing mediums so that whenever we go to seed, the seeds actually stick and don't just kind of bounce all, a little bounce all over the place. So the burlap is pretty easy. This is pretty straightforward. This is something we got in a big old spool and we just cut it to length ourselves. And as you can see, I cut it just a little bit short. And one thing about burlap is it does not hardly retain water. So we just gotta be really careful we don't let the crop dry out and that we don't overwater it and create some kind of fungus or anything or the stagnant water that starts to smell bad makes our crop go bad. So bam, both of those are slightly dampened. Now for micro mats, this one, these mats like to expand and if you don't have these positioned perfectly, they will tear super, super duper easy. Watch this, we're just gonna kinda hit it with a light pass and watch how much this guy starts to ripple and change and move and expand. I mean, it's a cool medium in theory, but I just haven't hardly had any success with it growing microgreens. At least not the way that I like to grow microgreens. All right, so we're just gonna let that one kind of soak up and we're gonna start doing this one. Again, we're just trying to get this damp and make sure our seeds stick here. All right, we don't go too wet because like I said, it will tear the second it gets too wet, kind of like a wet toilet paper, <laughs> it just falls apart. So what I'm gonna do now is, you guys can see it expanded. It was smaller than this tray. Now it's actually kind of growing into the tray. I'm just gonna kind of try to get this as flat as I can get it here without tearing it apart. So this one still needs a little bit of water because it's not expanding. All right, bam. Grow mediums are damp. Now let's get some seed. I'm gonna do 15 grams of this mix that I said. So I got my handy dandy scale and my tablespoon. I'm probably just going to be, it's usually about one and a quarter tablespoons. Let's see. Oh, that was so close. Dig a little bit out. Oh, now we're too much. This is the game of trying to make this even. Oh, see, 15.1. Mini game. Bam. There we go. Oh. oh, my gosh. Come on. Oh, my gosh. There we go. I'm gonna seed all of these with my hand and I gotta be careful here because this burlap, like I said, I cut it just a little bit wrong and it doesn't take up this whole tray. So I'm using the uh, back and forth seed technique and you can see how these seeds are just kind of sticking. That's what we want because if we did not wet this medium, they would be bouncing all over the place and probably down this slope that I have this tray angled at. Oh, I just remembered one thing about burlap that it does. See how it's curling in that corner over there? This is one thing that burlap likes to do. It likes to curl. Bam, that's pretty evenly seated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for these other three trays and I'll see you guys in just a second. You can see on these micro mats how the uh, little ripples here create high spots and things like that. And it kind of pushes the microgreens away from it. It's one thing I slightly dislike about it. Bam, okay, so all of the trays are now seated. What I need to do is I need to get all of these watered. So with the micro mats, they can hold a good amount of water, but we don't want to do too much that we create issues because if you do too much water with microgreens, sometimes what happens is they just won't germinate because it's just like overly saturated. They can't breathe. They don't like that. So we need to find a nice balance here. Make sure this is sucking up the water, but leaving enough for humidity and germination. All right, and on to the burlap. I think the burlap is about 30 cents per tray. I need to double check the cost on it, but I know it was relatively cheap, which is why I thought it was so exciting. But man, oh man, can it be a pain in the butt to grow with? We will find out though. So everything is now watered. What I need to do is I need to get these stacked up and I'm gonna stack it up in kind of a random order. That way we break up the uh, weight a little bit. 
And the trays at the bottom don't have more weight than the trays at the top. Let's grab a top tray. Bam, we we'll put that on there. Grab us two bricks here. Put that on top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over to our germination rack, which is in the dark. So I'm gonna get that place on there and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And let's see how these guys are germinating. All right, we are on day two of this micro mats versus burlap. So I'm getting the weights removed and let's take a look at this growth here. So our first micro mat tray is actually germinating really, really well. So we got a lot of those radicals popping out and everything looks like it's germinating nicely. Let's take a look at our burlap, same thing. So we're seeing some actually really solid germination here on both of these trays. And all these mediums still look like they have a decent amount of moisture to them. And that all looks really good. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a nice, light, quick mist for all of these trays. And that is it for today. I'm gonna get the weights put back on top, put it back on the blackout shelf, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, we are on day three of this burlap versus micro mats. Let me get these weights removed and let's take a peek at our growth here. So we'll start down at the bottom one. So the first burlap is actually looking really strong. We got a ton of those root hairs popping out and everything looks like it's germinating super strong. Very happy with that. Oh, wow. Okay, and this here is the issue with micro mats is that it just does not want to drive down into that medium. You guys can see like 90, I would say 90% of the seeds are stuck to the top of this. So I'm gonna give them decent watering, hoping that those will fall back in and hopefully with the added weight, uh, they will begin to germinate into the actual medium. So again, the burlap's looking really strong. We don't have a lot of clingers up on the top. Go ahead and get the little ones. And then same thing with the other micro mats. So we've got a lot of clingers up there and it's just really not able to get down to that medium. So it's a little disappointing, but hopefully the micro mats can come back. So far the burlap looks like it's doing great. I will see you guys tomorrow and we will take another look at this. All right, we are on day four of this micro mats versus burlap. I'm gonna get this weight removed and see if these guys are ready for blackout today. So the micro mat seems like it's not sticking as crazy as it was yesterday, which is a really, really good sign. I'm hoping that a lot of these are actually driving their radicals down into the medium and we will find out over the course of this grow. So the burlap looks very, very strong. The other micro mats is not looking so hot. In fact, I would say that this is probably gonna encounter mold issues here over the next few days because it looks like a lot of this has germinated very weird. And the other burlap is doing well. So I would say that the burlaps are ready for blackout. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna wipe all the bottom of the trays kind of like this and knock off anything that hasn't germinated well into my compost. And I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, so since the two burlap trays are ready for the blackout process, I have to do it for everything. So that means the micro mats are going into blackout as well, even though I think they could stay under weight for an additional day or so. So let's do a quick glance at these side by side and see how the growth is looking. So I will say that on the burlap, everything looks like it's germinating quite well. It's standing up nicely. It's removed a lot of the seed holes. And I would say that it's kind of digging into this medium a little bit compared to our micro mats which looks like we've lost a lot of chunks due to it sticking to the top and having to go into the compost. And overall, the growth just doesn't look happy. It hasn't germinated well, a lot of it isn't standing up, a lot of it still has seed holes on, and I feel like we're probably gonna run into issues with mold because there's gonna be a lot of die off on this tray. Uh, same thing with the other burlap looking very strong, and again with the micro mats. This one's looking a little bit stronger for the micro mat tray, but still, compared to the burlap, it does seem like it is behind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna get all of these watered and I'm gonna take a tray, I'm gonna place it on top reversed so that these crops can grow upwards without any kind of weight on top. And then I will see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so we are on day five of this grow for the micro mats and the burlap and everything has now gone through a one day blackout process and it is now time to introduce these into the light. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at these before we do that. So the burlap trays are looking really solid. All these have stood up very nicely. It looks like we've removed the majority of the seed holes and everything's looking super happy and healthy on these guys. So I'm actually very impressed with the burlap right now. As for the micro mats, it's looking decent, but actually I'm noticing where these seeds germinated but had nowhere to go, they are beginning to mold now. So all these seeds that were kind of stuck to the roof and kept falling on and weren't able to actually drive themselves into the medium, are now beginning to mold. So we are gonna have some mold issues to deal with, which means I need to spot treat this with some kind of antifungal such as hydrogen peroxide or something. Now the other burlap tray, again, doing amazing. I'm not seeing any signs of a mold or pathogen or anything like I'm seeing on the micro mat tray over there. 
And overall, these are looking super awesome. Those radish you can see are jumping ahead of everything else. And for the second micro match tray. So again, I am seeing right here some signs of mold where these guys are germinating, but they have nowhere to put their um, radicals and therefore they just begin to die on the surface of this mat and the decomposition process begins which means we are going to have to deal with mold on both of these micro mat trays, which is kind of frustrating considering these are over a dollar a piece for these tray, for these um, mats compared to the burlap, which I think is around 30 cents per uh, burlap sheet for these. So what I'm going to do is I need to find my antifungal, which is actually over here. And it's got just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in it. I'm gonna hopefully try to deter some of this mold from happening. Because I would like to finish this grow, but if this mold gets out of control, which I have a feeling it might, uh, then we might not be able to finish the grow with the micro mats. And normally you don't want to store hydrogen peroxide in clear bottles like this, but the reason we did it is because we just used this yesterday. So it's got a little bit of a shelf life, but you don't want to do it in clear bottles. Uh, opaque or black bottles would be best. So now that we've done that, uh, it is time to introduce these into light. What I will do is I'm going to flick on our blurples over here because they are some fun lights to grow in. So I'm gonna kick on our blurple lights and I'm gonna place these onto the shelf uh, one by one. And today what we're gonna be doing is actually begin bottom watering all these trays. So for bottom watering, what we do is we have some water that has been mixed with our ocean solution 2-0-3 nutrient that we love. And we are going to just take about a cup of that. We're gonna pour it into the bottom tray there and just set that down. And that's gonna allow those roots and a little bit of that medium to get moist and allow these guys to grow up now that they are in the light. So that is it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, we are on day six of this burlap versus micro mats. And as you guys can see, I have moved these out of the blurple Barina T8 grow lights and into the Barina T5 shop lights. And the reason is, is that it's just really hard to see what's going on with your crop underneath the blurples because of the coloration. And because there are such intense lights, it would actually keep this crop quite short. So I wanna stretch this out just a little bit uh, that way it's a little bit easier to harvest. So let's go ahead and take a look at these side by side for their growth. So as for the burlap, all this growth is looking really solid. All the brassicas seem to have perked up nicely and the radish is growing very strong. So everything's looking very, very solid. Now as for the micro mats, those that were able to get rooted into the medium are looking really strong, but all those that did not are developing in their mold. So I'm going to continue to treat this uh, and hopefully we can get this mold to stop so that we can finish the grow. I doubt that I'm gonna harvest the micro mat trays at this point because the mold is so prevalent on those trays. Uh, but still, just to try to get a comparison, we'll try to make it to harvest day here. As for the other burlap, same thing, looking very, very strong and very happy. And this micro mat tray is looking a lot better. I'm not seeing any, Never mind. there is mold tucked in right in there. So we do have some mold still mixed into this tray and that is just something that we encounter with micro mats. So we are going to try to make it to harvest day with the micro mats, but at this point it's looking pretty grim. I will see you guys in a few days for another update. All right guys, we are on day 10 of this micro mats versus burlap trial growing the Eastern Sun microgreens. And I've got to say these radish are massive, like way, way bigger than I want them to be. But the issue is, is that because this is a mixed blend, some of the brassicas have stayed very, very small while the radish have gotten huge. And this is personally why I don't like mixes that much. But let's go ahead and just do our best to get a good observation of all these trays side by side and see how the micro mats is comparing it against the burlap. So if you'll come over here, we'll take a look at our first burlap tray. So the growth on this is very, very happy. Looking at the radishes alone, they are all massive. We got great cotyledons. Um, we are seeing some very big true leaves. So I believe that these might be past the point um, of tasting good. We'll have to try that here in just a minute and see if they still taste good. But as for the brassicas, I'm very happy with this growth. It looks fairly even if you look at the canopy and I am seeing a few of the true leaves. And overall, I'm very happy with the growth on this burlap tray. I think it has come out really quite nice. On to the first micro mat tray. So again, radish are just absolutely massive, but I am noticing on this tray, there's a lot more of these faded cotyledons happening on the micro mats uh, compared to the burlap. You see how much darker these are on the uh, burlap side and on this um, micro mats, you're seeing a lot of that kind of ombre light to dark happening on the cotyledons for the radishes, as well as the, the brassicas themselves. Overall though, I think the growth is really quite nice. I am seeing a few little spots of mold back here, and that's something that we noticed. Yep, it's 
So we, we even have some up front as well, as you can see right here. We just have uh, mold it tends to happen on this uh, micro mat. I'm not sure if it's just the medium itself that has like pathogens in it or what, but we always tend to notice a little black spotting of mold, especially if there's a seed or two that doesn't germinate. It is just very quick to spread with a mold. Onto the second burlap tray. Again, it looks very similar to the first one. I'm very happy with the growth overall on this tray. I'm not seeing any spots that look bad. Um, and overall, yeah, very happy. I'm not seeing any kind of mold on the surface of the burlap. And everything has seemed to rooted, uh, seems to be really rooted into it. Onto the last micro mat tray. So again, I am seeing, as you guys can see up here, just like that black spot molding that happens on specifically only these micro mats. Out of all the mediums that we've tried in our grow space, micro mat seems to be the one that constantly produces mold like this. And it's very interesting because we still have it in its original packaging. It's still got plastic around it. And it's just something that commonly happens with it. So I'm just not sure if it's the medium itself or it's maybe the fact that it's made out of wood that it tends to uh, mold in this manner more than other mediums that we've tried, but whatever it is, it's something that is very common on this medium and I'm just seeing it all down the sides uh, Even on you know, just on these micro mat trays It's crazy how much of that black little speckled mold there is down there So what I need to do is get all of these harvested and we'll compare weights But that's gonna be a little challenging because like I said, this is a mix and Had this not had radish in it I would have actually let these brassicas that are underneath all these big old radishes grow a bit taller so that we can have an easier harvest. But because we did have these radish mixed in, it's going to be a little bit of a pain because the brassicas are short, the radishes are tall, and everything's going to be really quite short to harvest. So I'm going to do my best to harvest all these trays and I'll take a closer look at the mediums, talk about harvest weights, and just overall last thoughts about these mediums. So I'll see you guys in just a moment once I've harvested all four of these trays. All right, so I simulied. All I did was I harvested the burlap trays and I have not harvested the micro mats because I think that a lot of this black mold stuff is something I just don't feel like digging my knife into and kind of spreading around. It'd be a waste of a plastic bag because I'm not gonna save the produce. So this is going to go straight into the compost. But as for the burlap itself, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, we had a harvest weight of 183 grams for one tray and 195 grams for the other tray. So both were very easy to harvest. It was actually um, a lot easier than I thought, especially being a uh, slotted tray where these roots don't have a lot to grab onto like they do the uh, mesh tray. I was expecting this medium to try to pull itself out, but surprisingly it stayed in there very well during the harvest. And I kind of attribute that to having a very nice and sharp knife. If you guys do have a dull knife, it will probably pull up a lot of this medium. So let's go ahead and talk about the medium itself. So looking at this burlap up close now that we've harvested, I'm not seeing really any signs of mold or anything like that. I'm not seeing anything that worries me. Uh, this is just a big old cluster of roots. And overall, I am really actually impressed with the burlap. This is a medium in the past that we did struggle with. And I think it's because we were comparing it to some very, very strong mediums like Coco Coir, uh, BioStraight back in the day, um, Veg Bed and others like that, that do retain a lot more moisture. So we attributed this to be a bad medium. Whereas I think it's actually a pretty decent medium. You just have to be aware that it doesn't retain a lot of moisture and you do need to be a little bit more cautious about watering not overly watering and not underwatering with it. So as for the burlap, I am incredibly impressed with this. I'm very happy with the product that it gave us. I think that the harvest was easy. I think the medium did a great job. There's no signs of mold. It did allow us to root into this medium nicely and we didn't experience hardly any of the issues that we saw out of the micro mats. Now this is pretty substantial because this burlap is about 30 cents per tray compared to the micro mats, which is about a buck 30 per tray. So it's a dollar more per tray and you get mold and more inconsistent growth, worse germination. And I just don't know why this is a very popular medium. This is something that for some reason, a lot of people use. 
and I just, I don't understand. Maybe we got a bad batch of it, but all I know is every time we try to grow with this, we have very inconsistent germination, which always leads to problems with mold or dampen off or some kind of issue with the crop to where generally the crop is unusable after it, which is why I don't like doing tests with it because I don't like just throwing produce into the compost and wasting it which is what I'm gonna have to do with these two. All right guys, so that is it for this video. What I'm going to be doing is testing out burlap against some other growing mediums such as veg bed. Um, I think that we have a few others like jute that I would like to see because burlap and jute are supposedly really close products because I think burlap is made from jute or something like that. I should have done a little bit more research before I jumped into this, but I'm going to be testing this out against a bunch of other mediums to see how it does because again, I think it is actually a pretty decent medium here. There has been people in the past that said like there's additives in burlap and things like that so that's something to be cautious of but this is something that came from a grow supply company for the intention of being used for growing uh, produce specifically microgreens so if there is some kind of additive and they're not being transparent about that i would be actually quite upset but i'm trusting that the horticultural company is doing its best to give out products that are not filled with all kinds of crazy additives and instead is a product that is safe for growing microgreens, which is what they're selling it for. So that's something that's been brought up. I just wanted to make that clear in case anybody talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before I have to continue talking anymore, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. We have a website that is www.onthegrow.net where we have lots of great information such as a crop seeding guide. Uh, we have blogs now. We try to keep that updated. We're trying to do about four blogs per month. Uh, we did four for the month of August. We're gonna do a four more for the month of September. And we just wanna keep that going. That way we can give you guys as much information as we can in plain, simple text. That way you guys can read it. And our Instagram and our Facebook are both at on the Grow Farms. If you feel like following us for daily content, we post lots of fun stories on there. And generally you can see a little bit more of our humorous side on that. So that's all for today. Thank you guys so much and keep on believing.